All right, so hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, it's been about five or 6,000 miles since I did a review on the bike. So I wanted uh, to clock in and check this thing out at 21,000 miles. About 21,300 miles is what I got on it now. Again, had it since uh, 2000. And um, I know somebody told me to stop moving around. They got dizzy uh, last time. Only had one complaint, so I can't help it. I just got to keep walking around. I think think better walking. So, but um, the F6B guys, yeah, the new Gold Wings are out. I want to talk a little bit more about that, but um, in the comparison a little bit more, but. The first thing I want to talk about right now is these Bridgestone 703s and 709s and their wear. Um, so the front tire, I've got about 10,000 miles on these tires. The front tire still has quite a bit. Right there is actually a tread mark, I don't, or one of the wear marks, if you can see it there. And um, not, not near into it. So still a lot of tread on this front tire and I hate it because uh, this back tire at its lowest spot is uh, really looking um, like it could stand to be replaced and I don't know how good you can see that but man I am right down into it on that part of it um, of course on the check marks here eh, it looks like I still got some mileage there but uh, these uh, these middle is starting to um, look like this tire might not might need to be replaced prior to the front so man but I got a lot of tread back here still so I'm gonna look at that a little bit more but uh, I think I'm gonna probably get about 12,000 miles out of a set of tires this is that Bridgestone I believe it's 709 in the back 703 in the front or vice versa no 709 in the front 703 in the back and boy comfort the only time you get a little noise is when you um go around the corner and uh i don't mind that um i kind of like it actually uh, it sounds good so um that's the tires now uh, as far as the I mean, this bike is really just like fine wine, guys. It just keeps getting better. Every time I get on it and get off it on a long trip, short trip, I just love it. Um, you might have checked out my video. Still haven't replaced that, uh, that uh, ignition pulse generator. Um, you saw it was giving me trouble on the last video. Um, still haven't. <laughs> I started to tear the bike apart. You might have saw my brief video on that. Um, I took this piece off and I took this top part off, top of cowl, lower cowl, um, to try to get up in there. And then there was a sleeve over the connectors and I wimped out. So, um, but gosh darn, I just got another price on that for to change that pulse generator and the, the filter, $615. Just got a quote yesterday on that. So uh, that's a lot of beans, man. So I don't know. I might balls up again and try to pull this off. Um, this is uh, maybe the second time around. It'd be a lot, lot quicker. Um, but anyway, um, that's that pulse generator. So, but yeah, just still what I somebody said the other day. I saw it on a forum. Boy, it sounds like those uh, uh, ignition pulse generators have a knack of going out would you should i consider not buying the bike and i'm like really no uh, not too much you know except for a cylinder meltdown maybe that would uh would say hey wait a second let's reconsider the bike but other than that man those little uh electrical repairs stuff like that who cares um now let's uh take a look at it again uh, against that I want to talk about the radio again. I know I mentioned it. We went through the radio last time. I keep hearing more noise and more noise and more noise about that 2018. And even that I went to a dealer the other day and he said, not impressed at all with the stereo. Um, you heard cruise men garage cruise man's okay with it. Um, why? And you'll hear this from a lot of these people who've bought the new wings. I listened to it through my headset. Well, guess what? I hate listening to music through my headset. I got a Cena. Uh, it's the older Cena. 
um, that goes in my full face. I got a blink system in my other helmet. It's crap. I mean, <laughs> you can't get bass. You can't get what you can out of a uh, out of a stereo. Um, I'd love to someday maybe even upgrade this one, but right now I'm completely happy with it. I can barely get it up to 20, and if I have my Madstat up, I can't get it above 15. I mean, it's just too loud, even on the highway. Um, and somebody put that in my other video, too. Maybe uh, what, what you need to do on the new gold wing is to put a, um, a wider shield. I know the shield is a lot wider. This Madstat feels a lot wider. Um, than the uh, new gold wing and maybe that is the solution and it could be again when i spend thirty thousand dollars on a motorcycle i expect to drive it off the showroom floor and not really want to upgrade anything else now i know you guys got you got the guys out there that'll pull them off and go put the whole traxian system spend another four to six grand i'm not that guy okay um i you put that kind of money it better be perfect um so um uh, so it's really not a question of, uh, is that radio bad? Like I had it in the last one. I wasn't really sure too many people are squealing about that radio. It sounds great when you're sitting there, but at high speeds. And again, it could be because of that windshield, um, get a wider windshield. Uh, I know they're probably, and I think they do have already aftermarket windshields. Hey, I had to put a windshield on this one. I get it. There are certain things that, uh, that you, you do want to upgrade, but I bought this for 10.5 out the door, 10.7, uh, you know, with 2,000 miles on it, didn't drop 30 beans on it. So um, there you go. Um, want to talk about that win, guys, the, the perfect setup. Now, this is my first summer, full summer, with this Madstad windshield and my hand wing setup here. And I'm here to tell you, Never before on any motorcycle I've ever owned have I had been happier with a wind setup than I am on this bike, winter or the summer. The winter, you want to pull this thing up, okay? Summer, it's stayed like this for the last four months, okay? Down, in the down position, 15 inch, again, I'm six foot, 34 inseam, medium, tent. If you want the perfect windshield for this bike, it's that. If you're six foot tall with those kind of measurements. Um, I sit up straight. I see about 30 feet in front of me, okay? Um, if I sit down my regular motorcycle, I'm looking at about maybe 30 yards in front of me. So over the windshield is what I'm talking about. So it's perfect. Um, and, then it's, and, and then it's that wind tunnel, man. Boy. It, 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 I, I just can't explain it. There's a nice, cool, in the summertime, it's, it's so much better if you have these hand wings. These hand wings mean everything. Everything. Now, I, I, I do confirm, and I still stand by what I said in my last video, that they may cause a little bit of side turbulence when those things are closed during the winter, because you're not going to want to have those open during the winter. But in the summertime... When you open those, it actually takes away from the buffeting. And my wife agrees too, okay? She feels the buffeting when I, I call it closing the windows. <laughs> closing the, my windows. And then when I roll down the windows, um, the buffeting really goes away. And here comes that nice pocket of just smooth air from me to my passenger. Um, she does sometimes when I'm on the highway and I have it down here in the lowest position. And the other day I did bring this up. Uh, in the in the summer, uh, in the hot, um, we we were having 90 degree uh, weather here, 90 to 95 with 70 percent humidity. It's pushing it every day for the last. It feels like month. We're looking here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're looking at a feels like of anywhere from 95 to 100 degrees. So that's pretty damn hot. Now I know Texas has their dry heat, and people talk about Arizona and how hot, 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 hot. Well, let me tell you, it's nothing compared to the humidity heat that we have here, okay? I'll take dry heat over humid heat any day of the week, and, um, and this is definitely humid here. So, yeah, we did, um, I pulled that up for her to get some of the wind off her face on a long trip the other day, 
and uh, she appreciated it, but you know, she just said, hey, it, it feels good either way. Uh, it took a little bit of the uh, steady breeze back when I lift it. I don't even put this forward too much. I just like the looks of it in that fold down position. Um, it just makes the bike look a lot sexier um, from the front to the sides. Um, looks a little bit more like a traditional windshield, which I like. Uh, but if I go on a trip, especially if I want to hear that radio on the highway or I want to talk on the phone, that's another thing. If you're thinking about you're going to be on the phone, you're going to want to raise that Madstat up a little bit, especially on the highway. Um, you hear everything a lot better. The engine, you hear the radio 10 times better with that shield up in that two and a half inches uh, that you can get out of it here um, if you pull that up and adjust it. So there's no comparison. Got people that are looking at the twins, okay, the engines um, on a, you know, on a, comparing like a Harley or an Indian hey go for it you know they are pretty the indian i think is probably the prettiest bike on the road in my opinion imo but i'll tell you uh there ain't nothing like this having this much power than heat except for maybe the bmw the bmw is pretty cool too okay as far as the ride goes but if you're in a, if you're riding in the summer and you want a fast bike that's very cool um, temperature wise get this I don't feel anything again never put those shark gills on here that's crap the older ones before it's hit 2012 remember I had that 2006 that I had those uh, chrome shark gills we call them Ugh. just bake my wife's legs that directed the heat right back here on her thighs and she couldn't wear shorts so we like wearing shorts so um, don't ever get those but um, the heat and how they got this set up just regular don't put these side wings on there either because that other bike had those on there i don't know if that had something to do with uh the directing that heat off the um off the engine but i hate those things too this is the setup you want guys right here and i'd even say gold wing riders okay probably not much different but um <clears throat> yeah none of that big wing crap down there for me, at least. Uh, now, maybe in the summer to direct some heat back there, but I think you're gonna, or maybe in the winter, I mean, to get some heat opened up. That could be kind of cool, but I would definitely pull them off um, during the summertime because this is the perfect setup for this bike. So, so that's it for the uh, the wind, the air, um, uh, how, you know, the balance is just perfect, again, for me. It just feels better than anything I've been on. Believe it or not, guys, I'm still with the Omni Cruise and still with the, this still hasn't moved uh, after, I don't know, 17,000 miles now. I've never touched this. Um, it's in the perfect spot and it just stays right there, the regular old cramp buster. So this Omni Cruise is getting easier and easier to operate. I mean, I'm on the road now and gosh, I, I never sound, I never want to sound like I, I wouldn't love to have Cruise on here because... I probably would, <laughs> uh, but man, you're when I'm going down the road now. That is such a quick, fast motion. I just can't when I'm I'm just pulling it back and boom, you know, it's just it's there. Um, I rode down the road to uh, I did some highway traveling. Took about a hour uh, hour and a half ride today. Did a lot of 485 hit around the belt there in Charlotte. And man, I was just doing that all day long. And I don't know. It seems like you're your hand or your muscle memory just keeps getting better. I can't explain it, but I'm using this more comfortable than I, you know, than I did when I first had it, uh, where, when I first set it. I don't touch this adjustment too much, just a little bit, I guess, here and there. If I'm on a trip and I notice that it might be sliding off a little bit, I might tighten up the Omnicruise, but gosh, guys, think about it. That's about as easy as it can get uh, to a button pushing, you know, doing the same thing here. And then I don't, you know, I, I just go like that, twist it, and it breaks it. There's no lock or fear of running into somebody. I mean, you just, it breaks real easy. So I'm still up for the Omnicruise, guys. Got my vote, and it's made in the USA. Um, so if you're into that right now. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, let's see. What else? What else? brakes everything's looking good uh, i think because of my braking and stuff i'm about ready to probably put some pads on here uh, they're getting down i'm hearing some squeaking again i don't know if that comes from not putting 
grease on the back of the um, or just wearing off on the on these pads they've never been changed that's where that squeaking comes from most of you probably know that uh, it's not sometimes the squeaking from the pad hitting the rotor and that squeal that you get in the cars that lets you know that it's down I don't even know if these have those on there um, those type of uh, that let you know that it's getting down I think I'm getting the squeal just because it dries out it's if they're on there for 20 uh, 25,000 miles um, you're going to start getting some squeal because as that grease is wearing off the back of the pad people freak out when you talk about putting grease on pads not on the front on the back that's where they go and that keeps that uh, keeps them real nice and quiet <clears throat> so I'm about ready to put pads on here because they're getting down um, low um, especially my front this side on my front it seems to be lower than the rest of them but I'll probably change them all at once doesn't seem like it's a hard job. You just got to get a screwdriver up there. I've changed them on my Goldwing before. Getting that screwdriver and prying those, um, pushing those calipers in is a pro the, the hardest and kind of scariest part. You don't want to damage your rotor, but you have to get up against that uh, rotor to actually use it as a brace to push those things in. And then you pop the pads out and put it back in. There's no bleeding or anything. A lot of people go ahead and do it if they're do for it but I bled my brakes out when I did my um, recall um, for the um, the brake issue there that they put those new um, uh, whatever's on there anyway front and back so um, I, I just did it and it's two years I think for the brake so I'm good to go on that but speaking of the brakes guys um, remember if you're going over people have trouble uh, if you see a bump coming up, you know, either and you're wanting to slow down, I would just use that handbrake. Don't use the, it's people call it the rear brake, but it triggers everything here. And it also triggers your um, anti-dive. Okay, so uh, if you see that that uh, a big bump coming up, I'd stay off this one because uh, you, you could freeze that. That anti-dive will freeze these tubes up, and that's where people have broken uh, tubes and stuff, okay? So um, broken seals on their tubes because it's just so harsh. So let it go. Flow with it, man. Slow down as much as you can. Then just take your hands like off uh, the handlebars to not get jarred and just go over that bump and take the hit. Uh, if it comes up too quick, you definitely don't want to get on that brake when you hit that bump. And I've got a, a bump at the end of my driveway every time I get up on there. Um, I always make sure that I do that, that I'm just coasting up at a nice speed, uh, no brakes at all, um, to avoid any type of tube damage there um, that you get from that anti-dive. So yeah, just love it. Again, these, uh, you know, they flip these on the uh, opposite from the gold wings. They flip these around. It's funny, you don't really notice it until you see a sitting uh, F6B sitting beside a gold wing, but they literally did. So the gold wings, uh, the full dress are flipped over. Um, this is just upside down. It's pretty cool though. I love my, my side views mirrors. I mean, they're big. They never need adjusting. They stay in the same spot. Um, you just, um, they, there's no vibration, okay? So if, if you've ever been on a bike and it's jiggling in the back, probably a Harley, nothing against your Harley, uh, but uh, the, those things are jiggling all over the place and um, these just don't move. It's just a fantastic view from, from, you know, and that's all about safety too. I mean, no distortion equals more safety. So... Yep, and I'm still rolling with my Velcro. Uh, same pieces on there, guys. So haven't touched those. I've replaced the back a couple times on mine. Um, I did have an incident. I'll tell you about it real quick. Quick story. Um, I went to the mountains. I went to the tail of the dragon. What a ride, man. Um, all those turns within that 11 miles, 12 miles, whatever it is. I definitely got the t-shirt that says it all on there, but um, it, it's very, very cool. Anyway, um, I'm on a new stretch of road, and it's transferred from a new stretch of road to an old stretch of road, and um, I hit a bump. And I was like, okay, that was pretty severe, but I was kept riding, kept riding for about a, a two, three miles, and then I had to get off because I was going to go eat or something, and I looked down, and my phone cover was still on the Velcro, but my phone had had slid down right here and was laying perfectly balanced 
right there. I've got a Galaxy Note 3. Again, it's a $180 brand new phone, if, or brand new if you bought it. So I'm not really concerned about a $1,000 uh, iPhone or anything like that, which makes you feel better um, about using the Velcro system. But that's the only thing that's ever happened with this in, what, how long have I had that on there, guys? 15,000 miles? Uh, that's the only incident. And I think why it happened is I got in a hurry. I switched out a battery, put a fresh battery in just before I'd hit that bump. So I'm thinking I didn't press it hard enough on my, um, I didn't have the, the back of the cover all the way on. Therefore, that bump jolted it up because it seems like I've hit bumps before and that hasn't happened. So there you go. I'm still sticking with my Velcro over the claw um, simply because I've had a claw open up and pop my phone out. Now they have now with those, uh, with the straps and we probably talked about those. Those are cool. You definitely want those straps, uh, on top of the claw, but man, if you just want to keep this all clean looking and you want to really nice, be able to just look down and look at your, um, navigation, that works really good for me. I'm real, still real happy for, it. I know it's not the prettiest thing, but, um, it's still prettier than having your little nude label across there guys get those off use wd-40 it'll pull it right off um I, people say oh god wd-40 on my paint well you pour you've got to put it on there start scrubbing it let it soak a little bit spray a little bit more of that wd-40 on there let it soak a little bit more and just after a while it just starts to peel right off um so uh <laughs> the the safety sticker um, uh, but you can, you can make that be gone right away. And it really didn't, it didn't hurt the pain at all guys. So, um, now knock on wood, it didn't hurt mine. So take, you know, there's my disclaimer. Um, but anyway, I'm still with the stock pipes. I love the way they sound. I love the way they sound on the highway under a full face helmet. And still, I, I've, I've, ask some people about different type of i, I hear something on youtube like wow that sounds good um yeah but we had to put the loops in so they got the pipes in the loops um 400 300 loops on top of a 800 pipe you're up 11 1200 now again that's could be great for somebody it does they do sound great remember i had the six packs on here when i first bought it um and i did love how they looked i love how they sound except i got underneath that helmet and here comes the drone, drove me nuts. Off went those pipes, sold them, and got the, uh, somebody sent me some real nice um, standard pipes, OEM. So love them, and love them still. So besides that, guys, in maintenance, as far as maintenance goes, still maintenance-free, you know, changing the oil. And God, I don't know why, I just, I'm stupid. I just love it when it's time to change the oil. It's so easy uh, to change the oil on this motorcycle. And like other bike, God, a BMW, I've heard horror stories about that. You need a special wrench, get up underneath there. If you drop it in, you're dead for life. I don't know. It's crazy on how some bikes are... The oil change can be really rough. It, uh, Vulcan 900 was harder to change oil on than this bike. Um, very, very simple. And there's tons of videos out there that show you how to do it. A five-year-old <laughs> to change the oil on a full dress gold wing. Uh, so it, very simple. So just like the maintenance on the bike, again, it's maintenance free. Um, so that filter is due and I coupled that in with that and I'm still contemplating, should I get all that done? But 600 bucks, man, ouch. Um, and these filters, people say that they can take those filters Heck, I've heard all kinds of numbers, guys. I know that, what is it supposed to be changed? 12, 15,000 miles? Um, I've heard 26,000, 36,000, 50,000 before a filter change. That's if you don't live in the country and get some mice up there in your box. I mean, a guy commented on another one of my uh, videos that he had a mouse in his, uh, in his box, and I've heard that a lot. So if you're in the country and you keep it in a barn or uh, you got field mouse, mice around, watch out. Uh, they can hell there could be up one up in mine right now and I don't know about it, but it's running pretty good. So I doubt it um, and uh, but anyway So guys, uh, that's about it. I think I covered everything that I wanted to update you on um, Still love it. Uh, I, I They're still out there guys brand new f6b deluxes are kind of sliding away now um, You can still get one with a couple thousand miles on it looks like the a deluxe and again if i was to do it again maybe just go ahead and spring for the extra thousand for the deluxe um that's eh, not too bad 
um, and having an automatic turn signal now. Uh, I'm up and down about that, but that's about. I don't have that. And I don't have the heated grips, and I would like to have the heater heated grips during that uh, fall season, um, coming out of uh, winter into spring too. I can't lie. There's times where I say, God, heated heated grips would be nice, but um, I don't have them. And you never can get the. You can put everything on this bike that a deluxe has, but you. From what I know, I'm sure there might be a way, but how do you add the auto turn signals um, once it's uh, out of the factory? Don't know. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm always about the auto factory turn signals. Is it safe or not? The auto off is what I'm talking about when you make your turn. Eh, I don't know, man. Um, I have pluses and minuses on that. I like having being in control of that a little bit now and Man, you can see it right there in the in the front. We talked about it before um, that it it shows up when you have that turn signal on. In Edinburgh, you know, look at in that. Central Sweden. So you could see it real easy, unlike uh, other bikes that I've been on. Still loving just all the. <laughs> everything has its own button, you know. None of this. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but man, it's nice to have a button for everything. You know, not having to go into a menu like the new ones got and all that crap that you have to go through to turn on the radio. I never figured out how to mess with the radio um, on a test rides. You know, it's just so confusing um, to get through it. Same with that BMW. My God, uh, I took that thing out. And I think I might have mentioned on another video. I always like to take it out, make sure I've got what is that new full dress one they got on the BMW 1600 GTL? What's it called? All American or something like that? Whatever. They cut you off at 100 miles an hour. Knocks you off. Can you imagine driving down the road, getting on it? Boom, the engine shuts off or, or stops you. I don't think it shuts off, but just you're limited. Got your governor on there at 100. Man, I would just die. Now, I don't get above that too much, but uh, I don't want somebody to tell me I can't go above 100. And that BMW GTL, that just takes it out of the class as far as I'm concerned. I'd get the one right underneath that <laughs> and get that full dress one for that simple reason. Crazy. But, um, yeah, still the F6B, guys. Uh, my bike of choice, um, and a lot of people out there seem to love Everybody who's got one just seems to just love them. Um, so go out and get you one if you ain't got it yet. If you got any questions about this bad boy, um, please uh, throw a comment down there. I'll get right back to you. And uh, that's it, YouTube. Have a great one.